Are you an engineering student trying to break into quant finance? Have you already missed the opportunity to attend an insight day or apply for summer internships? Are you struggling to think of ways to get some experience on your CV in time for the next round of applications? I was just like you, having recently secured my full-time offer, keep watching as I share some unconventional advice and anecdotes of people who have made this very transition. You've probably heard of this advice before. Just apply early to summer internships and insight days. This has to be done early in your college slash university career. But what if you didn't want to do quant finance at the start? What if you were um, distracted? What if you were interested in another industry? Or perhaps they would tell you to do a PhD at a top ranked university. Or what if you don't want to commit to a PhD? What if you don't want to do a PhD? And what if your grades or you're currently not at a top ranked university. Or perhaps take a MFE, a Master's in Financial Engineering, straight after your bachelor's. Well, if you're anything like me, cost is a constraining factor and we can't just embark on the next degree after our bachelor's. Or finally, perhaps the most useless one, just be a math and, com and computer science genius. Well, that's not really advice, is it? So who should listen to this advice? I reckon you are students, upcoming graduates, currently in university, studying non-target technical degrees from non-target schools. That is to say, not in computer science, not in mathematics, but something like mechanical engineering, biomedical engineering, and economics. You are looking to stand out even further in the application process. You are seeking a third door into the industry, having had the first two, likely already slammed shut in your face. You are students seeking summer portfolio ideas. And finally, you are just a late transition student. You are in your final or your penultimate year. This is the non-traditional advice I wish I had before I made my own jump, having come from a non-traditional quant background. When you follow this advice, please do temper your expectations. You may not be getting inundated with offers, but I'm sure you will get your foot in the door and ultimately, you only need one, and the first one is all that matters. First off, you can look to complete your CXA level one. Now, this is my least favorite advice. However, I have seen students doing just this. It is not something I would recommend due to the big time commitment, up to 300 hours of studying time just to clear level one. However, it does serve as a great Signalism, a great talking point, a conversation starter when it comes to your interviews, and it also does equip you with a broad and introductory level to finance. Next up, select the right optional modules slash electives if possible. For a lot of students in your later part of your of your college slash university course, you are likely to be able to select some optional modules. And I would highly suggest focusing on finance, statistics, probability, machine learning, programming. These are the core bread and butter skill sets within finance. So you would be wise to try and get as much of those on your CV as possible. Next up, you can look to take part and ideally win some data science and one finals competitions. Through your university's career societies, such as finance, investment, trading societies, which I'm sure many universities currently have, you can look to take part in such competitions which are hosted by various firms. A good example is the G Research Fund, which hosts competitions via Kegel. Citadel also hosts various data science competitions, and UBS also does that. And the hedge funds Cube RT and Capital Fund Management, or CFM, have also hosted similar competitions online and ideally you should try to win it and if you don't win it's fine just remember that it does serve as a great talking point during your interviews next up and this is what i highly recommend is to independently source your own research project research skill sets particularly if you're going to be a quant researcher within quant finance are the main skill set that they are looking to hire you for you can search up professors within your own department. You might be surprised that some of them might be researching applications that 
have a crossover within finance. Some of them might be uh, taking part in a, in a lab that also has some research interest within finance. With these projects, you might be able to suggest some type of undergraduate research project. If you are in the UK, I'm pretty sure there are similar schemes available in the US. If your university has a finance slash mathematics department, you can also approach these finance and mathematics professors. You can show some interest in the research that they have done. You can try to take part in their research project, even if a little bit. And I have an anim- have an anecdote that did precisely this, and you want to stick around to hear that. Next, get creative in your application. You can still apply to summer internship, even if you are not suitable. So let's say you have graduated. You can, you should and can still apply to summer internship. While most of them might reject you, just remember that all you're trying to do is to get your application through the door in front of somebody. And if you stick around, you will hear about an, an anecdote of somebody who did just that. Applying to a summer internship, an employee saw the application and referred the individual to a full-time role instead. Consider applying to smaller non-quantitative hedge funds. Increasingly, a lot of funds, whether quant funds or non-quant funds, are collecting a lot of data. And they are trying to put this data to good use. I would recommend cold emailing these firms, look, reaching out, expressing, inquiring about any opportunities available, highlighting the skill sets that you bring, just to start a conversation. And this is something I have done personally. And in fact, a fund based in London that did not employ any quantitative methods actually was interested in offering me an internship to help them construct some sort of quantitative pipeline within their firm. So definitely try to expand the horizon of the funds of the firms that you are applying to. Also, take advantage of applying to smaller, more regional offices. And this is something that another one of the anecdotes that I will share later did precisely that. He secured his summer internship before transferring to the main office in London. Now, in anecdote one, this was a penultimate year student. He or she had just completed a machine learning course online. It was on Coursera. It is their most famous machine learning course, perhaps ever, that's hosted on Coursera. Having completed this online course, he or she was looking for an immediate project to apply the new skills, particularly within finance, as that was to his or her areas of interest. They found a mathematics professor from the from the same university, he's in a different department, who specialized in research within quant finance. They were active in reaching out expressing interest in his research and even waited outside the professor's office repeatedly to attempt to speak to him in person to request an audience. After much persistence, after much perseverance, the professor finally agreed to allow the student to assist his PhD student in some research over the summer of the pandemic. Now, all this work ultimately allowed the student to have some summer opportunities during the pandemic, but his or her name was ultimately also included in the published paper. Now, this individual ultimately went on to do research in AI, having left the field of quant finance, having discovered it only briefly, but I think it's a great example of what some ingenuity, some creativity, and some perseverance can bring to you. This next example is of a PhD student in the field of biomedical engineering who was growing rather bored of his field and increasingly curious about finance. Being a PhD student within a technical field, he brought a lot of transferable research skill sets already. Eager to find out more about the field of quantitative finance, he looked up professors within the business school at his university. He found one that had some interest in quant finance He wrote to the professor, and after exchanging some emails expressing his interest in learning more about quant finance, the professor actually gave him a small research project for him to work on. And this research project was ultimately the talking point when he began interviewing with various funds in the city that he was in, and ultimately allowed him to make a jump to a hedge fund and begun his career in quant finance. 
So once again, showing a bit of uh, curiosity, initiative, reaching out to professors, not being afraid of bothering people can take you surprisingly far. In anecdote number three, this is a soon-to-be graduate in engineering, having found out about an engineering professor who was dabbling in the applications of machine learning within the financial context and who also ran a small startup. The student expressed interest in working with the team, working with the professor. He met the team, they were impressed with his interest, and they offered him some work over the summer. And eventually, he did well with this summer work, and this was transitioned into full-time working with the startup. And having gained a year's worth of experience with the startup, he used his experience to apply to various roles, and ultimately, it was an application to a summer internship role, which morphed into a full-time offer for this individual. So once again, having some initiative to reach out to professors, expressing interest, and also daring to apply to as many roles as possible, including summer internship roles, allowed this individual to transition from an engineering degree to a full-time offer within quant finance. In anecdote 4, this individual was interested in quant finance, she applied to all the head offices of various firms in London. However, she was detested by all of them. Being European, she decided to apply to some smaller regional offices within the EU. Because of the availability of roles there, and because she also spoke the language, she was able to actually clinch a summer internship in a role that would have been way more competitive within the London office. She performed well at the internship, and when offered a full-time role, the next year, she requested an internal transfer to the London office, and this was accepted, and she began her graduate position based in London. So, this is a great example of trying to apply to as many offices as possible. You know, if you legally can work in these places, or even if you can't legally work in these places, try your best. You might never know what opportunities might be, be available, and don't discount the roles that are on offer in the non-head offices of these various firms. Now, you've made some more conventional moves, and the next step is to start applying for those positions. In order to leave no stone unturned in the hiring process, you must know what dangers lie ahead, so you may arm yourself adequately. Watch this next video about my recent experience applying for quant finance roles in London to find out more.